animating a really basic wave shape is incredibly easy, but some waves are much harder to animate, such as when there's one point that stays still, like a tail, and the other side of the wave actually does move. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of different methods of animating a wave using a cat's tail as an example. Now you can follow along with your own illustration, or there's a link in the description below where you can download my working file in Procreate Dreams. Although the theory is gonna work in any animation software, the wave principle is universal. And by the way, hi, I'm Brooke Glazer. I'm a professional illustrator and I create online classes and resources for artists. Animating waves like this is super simple and super easy. In fact, it's so easy that it kind of ruined the optical illusion for me when I first figured out how to do this. All I did was draw some wavy lines and then move them from one side of the canvas to the other. If we take a closer look here, I've actually drawn the white lines and the blue and green lines on different layers and moved them at slightly different speeds to create more dynamicness in there. And if I turn on all the sets of the waves, it looks a little bit messy, but all it is is waves moving across this canvas. And if we preview that again, well, maybe you can kind of tell that these are just literally moving across the screen. However, in an animation like this, that technique is not gonna work at all. First of all, it's a completely different motion. But second of all, the base of the tail is staying in the same spot. Same thing with this cat's tail. It doesn't move all the way off screen, so we need to take a different approach. So let's look at how to draw this frame by frame in Procreate Dreams, and I am in flipbook mode. If you're new to Procreate Dreams, you may wanna check out my YouTube tutorial on it here. So I'm gonna start by drawing a curved line that connects at the cat's uh, butt right there. And then if I move one frame over, this yellow is gonna show my onion skin, which is just a preview of the last frame. And I'm going to continue this curving line, but it's gotta also connect at the same spot at the butt. Now, when I go back and forth, it's curved because this tail is curving, it's swinging in this direction. So the momentum is swinging that way. But eventually, it's got to flip and turn this direction so that it can swing in this direction. So now my cat's tail is moving, but honestly, it's more like wagging like a dog's would. So while this basic motion is a wave, we can do a little bit better than that. This time around, we're gonna add a little bit more lifelike movement to this cat's tail by adding some overlap at the end of the tail. And this is gonna help us kind of create almost like, you know, like a, a waving, whip cracking kind of motion. So what I'm gonna do is then the first frame is gonna start the same. We're moving over like this. But now what's gonna happen is this half of the tail, well, it's gonna start moving back over this way as if it's moving towards the other side. But this half of the tail, it's gonna continue to curve around this way. So that is going to look like this. So this half of the tail is curving this direction and this half of the tail is curving this direction, just like a wavy line. And I'm gonna continue that movement by helping this tail curve around a little bit more this way and this one curving even more in that direction. We'll do it one more time and this tail is starting to flatten out. So you can see that it's, this half of the tail is curving up, curving up. And if we look at this half of the tail, it's curving down, curving down. And eventually, this half of the tail is going to whip around and it is also going to be swinging in this direction. So I'll keep going to the other side now. And eventually, the same thing is gonna happen on this side. So this half of the tail is now gonna be swinging around back towards this side, while this one, it's gonna take, it's gonna need a couple more frames before it can switch to that side. So I'll curve the top half a little bit in that direction, and the bottom half is coming further up. One more. And I think that's enough right there. And then I'm just gonna come close to where we started in the beginning. Now, this looks a lot more natural and frankly, a lot more interesting to look at. We can use this same technique and ideas behind waves to do a different kind of wave with the cat's tail where just the bottom is moving and the top is staying relatively still. So let's give that a shot. I'll start with the cat's tail curved. And then as I go down a little bit, I'm gonna go further down and let this curve relax downwards. And we're starting to see that the cat's tail is going from
from tight to relaxed to further out. And as we get to this side, you'll notice that we're getting that similar twist where it's flicking up like this half is going one direction and this half is going another direction. You can see the two sides of that arc starting right there. And eventually it's all the way curved in one direction. Bring it back down to this side. And as we start to come this way, it's got to bend. So this half of the tail is still curving this way, but this half of the tail is starting to curve back around this way. And then we've come full circle. It can be challenging to figure out exactly where and how to draw your curves. Luckily, we can use another technique to help us figure out exactly where to draw those curves, which is by using an animation timing chart. I learned this from Michael Relth, who did a fantastic workshop for Lightbox, which you can watch on YouTube, and I'm gonna link that video below. Now, I've slowed this down here a little bit. Let's take a closer look at what's actually happening. So on the left-hand side, you'll notice that there's a yellow dot that's moving down with the numbers. And also, the curve that is moving this direction, the peak of that curve is also moving with that number. Let's slow it down even more and look at this side. So if we watch the pink dot, you can see that the curve, the peak of the curve, is moving with each of these numbers. And as it gets down to number eight, it starts back up at number one again. The pink dot shows up at number one. And that's because this is a looping animation. So we can time this out to create a continuously looping animation, which is super useful in a lot of different scenarios. But again, we can watch the curve is moving. The peak of the curve is moving with those numbers. Let's draw it out together. I've included this chart in my file, so if you want it, you can grab it via the link in the description. So I've created my chart and I've also added these dots and they move down one at a time. And one thing you'll notice is that when the dot reaches number eight, it also pops up to number one because once it's here, once that's where my animation is going to loop. So as I start, I'm going to be thinking, okay, the peak of this curve is touching right here on number three and the peak of this curve is touching right here on number six. So that's how I'm gonna draw them, that one. And if I move to the next frame, you'll see that the new peak is gonna be here at number four, and it's gonna move down to seven. And now I'm on number eight. So this time, there, since there is no peak, I'm actually going to curve the tail like that because this isn't gonna be curving around it right here. It's, that's the end of the tail. However, now there's a dot up here at two. So now, the tail is gonna curve from here and curve from there. And I'm making sure, again, I'm thinking, this is this curve at number six. Now the curve is reaching its final curve right here at seven. And now, as we reach number eight, it's gonna be the same thing on this side. The peak is hitting number four. So now I've got a curve over here so the peak is coming over here, and it's coming over here. Let me take a couple of times for you to get that curve quite right. Now, I actually started with my first curve on number six, so I've actually completed the loop. So if I play my tail back now, you'll see that it's a perfect loop. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the guide so we can see this a little bit better. And voila! And if you're looking to level up your illustrations even more, you may want to check out my program, The Illustrator's Launchpad, where you can learn how to draw, stylize your art, how to choose beautiful colors, and add shading and highlighting. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to cover in my next tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about animating and procreate dreams, you may be interested in my YouTube tutorial on it here.